Here in this temple of energy technology, the architecture is spectacular. Soaring two-story buildings with pillars and, and windows and... All right, it's just a strip mall. But there's a lot of really exciting research going on here. You're an algae rancher, right? We are, we are, we are an algae rancher, our algae farmer, algae rancher. We grow algae specifically for uh, initially for the purposes of biofuel production, but there's lots of other uses for algae as well, which we're also concentrating. So a lot of environmentalists would say the future is green on planet Earth, but you would say, no, actually it's green goop. So so nobody's seen this before, besides nobody's, you guys. Nobody's seen this before. Right. Was coming this is the breakthrough. When you open that door, the world will see. All right, let, let's go for it. Sure, sure. It's an algae tank. Yeah, I'm loving it, <laughs> but it's a it's a green tank. It's a, it's a tank with green goop in it. If algae is collecting sunlight at the top of a body of water, mm -hmm. as it grows and produces more algae, the sun can't get below. That's the fundamental flaw with growing algae at large volumes for biofuel production. You have to grow it extremely dense in order for it to be able to be cost effective for biofuel production. We actually use a concept called internal You're not gonna, you're not gonna baste me or anything here, right? No, not at all. You can actually transfer the, the, uh, the light down into the deeper part of the pond and create a homogeneous light source below the surface of the pond. So the sun, imagine this is the sun, it's hitting the surface and the light gets all the way down here. Exactly, all the way down up to a meter and a half deep. Uh, so it's a, it creates a, it's a very nice light source for it internally and therefore more algae per acre can grow. Algae can use the fo whole photoactive region, but it utilizes red and blue light most efficiently, which is the reason that we're utilizing red and blue in our fire reactors. So algae looks at this uh, light setup here and it's goes yum, yum, yum. Super yummy. Super, Absolutely. super yummy. I'll have a little red, I'll have a little blue. Have you, have you told the algae, Mike, that they're going to be sort of harvested for dumping into Volkswagen Jettas and stuff? Uh, well, I usually would say we, we'd like to keep them in the dark uh, and not tell them that <laughs> we're actually going to keep them in the light. Think of very large canals, kilometers of large canals near CO2 sources like uh, power plants that provide the CO2 next to polluted water sources like runoff from agricultural fields to provide the nutrients for the algae. You're solving multiple problems with this. You're solving CO2, global warming type issues. You're solving uh, polluted water sources. You're creating oxygen and you're creating renewable fuel. So I'm hearing a lesson here. There is a lesson. I mean, for hundreds of millions of years, algae has been our friend. It's time for us to be a friend to algae. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's certainly time for us to renew our friendship, yes. <laughs>